Welcome and thank you everyone. So hopefully you're in the right virtual room. This is Central Michigan PRSA's official 2020 annual meeting and I'm Greg Rokiski, if you don't know me, current CMPRSA president. Joining me as panelists and fellow speakers are 2021 CMPRSA president, Jessica Tremontana, APR, and current PRSA national chair, Garland Stansel, APR. While this is certainly less exciting than cheersing in person, we're glad you're here with us regardless. So this is just a brief agenda for our evening together. If you want to participate, please weigh in through the chat during our time together. Additionally, at any point, should you have a question for me, Jessica or Garland, please drop them in the Q&A section and we'll make sure that we get you an answer either live or during the, fo the follow-up. Before I do dive in, I want to shout out and recognize two special guests in our virtual audience tonight. Newly elected PRSA National Director, Jennifer Day, APR, and Rick Batico, APR Fellow, who has served as our PRSA National East Central District Liaison for the past four years. Send them some warm regards via the chat. So without further ado, let's get started. There's certainly no question it's been a wild year and there's just nothing I could say that will ever fully encapsulate how 2020 has affected us individually and collectively. For those that attended our first ever virtual PACE Awards back in June, I talked briefly about where we were at in that moment in time. It feels truly like decades ago. Three months into the pandemic and a reckoning with racism and social injustice among other things. Now, here we are rounding our eighth month, working what feels like day to day full of new challenges, uncertainty and anxiety. We've suffered loss, taken on additional burdens of teacher, daycare provider and not crisis communications practitioners in a world where exceptional leadership now often includes the words, I don't know. However, I want us to remember what 2020 has taught us. If you're like me, I don't hope things return exactly to the normal as they were, but instead we reach a new normal of equity, humanness, courage, and vulnerability. Tonight, I want us to celebrate the silver linings while we also toast to the end of 2020. First, let us celebrate by reflecting on what we survived. Catharsis is therapeutic. So as I speak, if there's something you're exceptionally proud of, need to mourn or say goodbye to and leave it in 2020, please do so in the chat at any time and we can move past it together. The 2020 CMPRSA board and committee members signed up to a lead this organization in a world where COVID did not rule at the forefront of our minds. Therefore, when the pandemic turned to many of our leadership teams day to day upside down, I am so proud of our pivot to create a COVID task force of individuals who felt they had that extra bandwidth to help keep our chapter functioning. It is with the people power of this specific group and the insights from the rest of the CMPRSA board that we developed virtual happy hours and other programming that would provide an outlet for our members and guidance on topics that were both timely and valuable. And this included a fireside chat with former Consumers Energy President and CEO Patty Poppy, where she spoke on internal communications and workplace culture. Given the exponential increase in communicating virtually through platforms like Zoom through Force, we strengthened our relationship with also East Central District, PRSA National, and other chapters throughout Michigan. Speaking of, this ultimately is what led to our official formation and PRSA nationally recognized PRSA Michigan Chapter Collective, where we held our first event this fall with Governor Gretchen Whitmer's Deputy Chief of Staff and former Director of Communications, Zach Pohl, and Bridge Detroit reporter, Bryce Huffman. Since then, we have continued to share correspondence and utilize this channel of collaboration and communications. It is something I am proud of for our whole chapter and our state. Additionally, we took an internal look at how our chapter effectively serves the entire community in which we are supposed to represent. Therefore, the leadership began a dialogue with the West Michigan PRSA chapter about developing our strategic goals with a diverse, equitable, and inclusive lens. How do we communicate and is it in a way that reflects all our members? Is our programming set up 
executed and evaluated inclusively and equitably? Do we reach out beyond our echo chambers and ensure we consider all perspectives when we make decisions? Since then, we have met with many facilitators and experts in this area over the past several months. And while the work is certainly a marathon and not a sprint, these decisions will hopefully have a long lasting positive effect on our chapter, but also our community as a whole. Another decision was to make a seat at the executive table of our chapter to ensure this lens and oversight is at the forefront of every decision. I am so proud to announce that as a result of our 2021 member slate and bylaw amendments put forth before you all, our membership, it was nearly unanimously voted to move our inclusion, diversity, ethics, and advocacy chair position to the executive team of our chapter. This means that this position will now need to be filled every year by the nominations chair and will no longer ever be vacant. It will also sit in and have voting power at the executive committee level and help provide further accountability within the chapter and board for all that are represented. Speaking of our 2021 board slate, I am so happy to now honor and congratulate to all of you, our 2021 CMPRSA board as voted on and approved by you all again, our membership. First, I'd like to recognize and congratulate our 2021 executive committee, Jessica Tremontana, APR, president. TJ Bucholtz, president-elect. I myself will be moving into the past president role. Allie Caldwell, our secretary. Lisa Beering, treasurer. Catherine Jappinga, assistant treasurer. Monica Ackerson, APR, assembly delegate. And finally, Kamara Lewis, inclusion, diversity, ethics, and advocacy, or IDEA, champion. Next, I'd like to recognize our 2021 directors at large, Alicia Pilmore, Kamara Lewis, Cassie Cotton, Dustin Early, Danielle Deneau, Catherine Jappinga, Kirsten Waldron, and Laura Hall. And finally, our 2021 chair positions, Jesse Adler, APR, Accreditation Chair, Helen Corneffel, Communications Vice Chair, Monica Ackerson, APR, East Central District Chair, Kirsten Waldron, Membership Chair, Allie Caldwell, Pace Awards Vice Chair, Allie Telfer, MSU PRSSA President, Rachel Perkins, MSU PRSSA Professional Advisor, Rose Tantrapol, APR, MSU PRSSA Faculty Advisor, Haley Jones, New Professionals Chair, myself as Nominations Chair, Alicia Pilmore, Programming Chair, and TJ Bucholtz, Sponsorship Chair. This truly is an exceptional group. And with Jessica's leadership at the helm, I'm just so excited for what CMPRSA will bring you all in 2021. As I wrap up my recognition, I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to reflect back on the 2020 leadership team and send out an overwhelming thank you to everyone listed here for their dedication, perseverance, and stewardship during this truly, I will say it and you guessed it, unprecedented year. Thank you each and every one of you. It was an honor to learn and grow with you as professionals and more importantly, people over this year. Please help me in congratulating the 2021 board and thanking the 2020 board by weighing in via the chat. Emojis, exclamation points, and all. So if you had asked me if I would step into this role as president, knowing all of the stuff that would be thrown at us this year, I would likely still say yes, because that's just who I am. However, there are no shortage of lessons I've learned. As I wrap up with you with my remarks tonight, I wanted to share some of these lessons. <clears throat> the first one is humanness matters. I have seen some of the best brands and communications efforts lean into being human this year, whether it's communicating loss, safety, or uncertainty around COVID-19, standing up against racial injustice, or crafting PR efforts around other tumultuous news. Hashtag election 2020. I hope many of us understand how much of a human touch we all needed. 
We also have to remember and recognize that human side of communication requires allowing ourselves and the others in which we collaborate that grace. I was nowhere near as perfect as president this year. I could have communicated more, taken on more initiatives, encouraged more programming, and the list goes on. At the end of the day though, I did what was best for the board and also my own mental health. That being said, leadership doesn't stop when it gets hard. No matter how hard things get, if you're in a leadership position, you have to take responsibility for those and the duties under your charge. Within CMPRSA, we tried new things. Some worked. Our virtual PACE awards, coordinated by Allie Caldwell, is a huge success. And others were less successful. Some of our smaller group happy hours. But those conversations were just as great. I told our board that they shouldn't be afraid of quote unquote failure. And I think this group taught me more than I could ever put into words about leadership during difficult times. That's when leadership matters most. No matter what side of the aisle you fall on, it'd be hard for anyone to deny the incredibly hard decisions Governor Gretchen Whitmer and her team have had to make this year. And it was so valuable to me to be able to hear from Zach Pohl, an insider on his takeaways from that campaign. And we, when we heard from Patty Poppy, she touched on the fact that workplace culture is so important and has become even more so when their and other organizations started working remote indefinitely. These pivotal, difficult moments are when leaders step up to the plate. Communities can make a world of difference, whether in person or not. Being able to connect via our monthly board meetings, albeit virtual, other virtual events, district and national opportunities, those were honestly a saving grace for my sanity this year. I met many new faces that I otherwise wouldn't have as a result of being forced into a virtual environment without any geographical borders. Outside of PRSA, I've made so many new connections via social media, largely as a result of being vulnerable about 2020 and the challenges, leaning into my humanness and being unashamedly myself. People have gotten creative to find that connection we so deeply need. It certainly doesn't replace in person, but I think we need to keep communities without borders a priority of whatever this new normal looks like on the other side of the pandemic. Taking care of ourselves is not selfish. This is still so hard for me. I will fill my time and work around the clock in a crisis situation. The problem with 2020, however, is that most of this year has been a nonstop crisis situation. That is not sustainable for me or anyone else to be always on whether personal, professional, or in our extracurricular involvements. No matter whether you're a parent, living a alone, or have multiple roommates, you have to make time to check in and care for yourself. We're no good to the organizations where we work or the teams in which we collaborate if we're working toward burnout. And let me tell you, burnout is very real. For me, taking care of myself has meant investing time to slow down, cracking open a book, and decompressing and sometimes that's for several hours and other times it's just a few minutes here and there, wherever I can find it, especially having a new puppy the past few months. We have to stop beating ourselves up for needing to care for ourselves. And my final one is privilege has lasting effects. I will admit, I will proudly say I'm a queer white dude, two thirds of being pale, male and stale. At least I hope I'm succeeding in not being so stale. My goal is always to continue recognizing the access to systems set up for me as a result of that privilege and work toward creating systems that remove barriers for other groups of communities. We've made little progress in a lot of ways over hundreds of years. Technology on the other hand has developed at an insane pace. Let's try to channel that same speed when it comes to equity. I can't tell you how difficult it was in our search for a unicorn during our facilita facilitation discussions that was both a strategic planning facilitator as well as one fluid in diversity, equity, and inclusion. But just because that search and effort was difficult doesn't mean our groups can shy away from the work or put it off until later. If you have privilege, it's not enough to sit by and make excuses for why we don't have time to address said privilege. We must roll up our sleeves and have those uncomfortable AF conversations and interactions. Won't you join me? So I know these might be unconventional lessons that aren't directly PR communications or marketing related. When I think of it though, a lot of challenges we face are symptoms of much larger problems. 
I hope you found at least one nugget or so that you can take away that will indirectly help you strengthen your repertoire as a PR practitioner or leader. If not, good thing we have two more speakers. Okay, you're nearly done hearing me prattle on. Um, with this, I'm so excited to introduce two people who are way more exciting and impressive than I am. Without further ado, to get you ramped up and excited for what's in store from CMPRSA in 2021 and provide an update on behalf of MSU PRSSA, I'm pleased to pass the virtual mic to the always badass Jessica Tremontana, APR who will then be followed by current PRSA National Chair, Garland Stansel, APR. Thank you so much, Garland. And I think if anyone who knows you and loves you like I do, I think you are anything but stale. So um, thank you for your sparkle. Thank you for your leadership this year. And, you know, as Greg said, it has been a wild year, <laughs> just crazy. And you keep hearing that word unprecedented, but think about it in 2020 we have faced you know protests demanding social justice and racial justice a global pandemic murder hornets i mean what's next so many of you may be caring for seniors or loved ones or if you're like me you could be caring for them and unexpectedly homeschooling them um, with young ones as schools close so i i just really want to echo greg's sentiments and um, applaud our members, especially the hard work of our board and the executive team. You guys are absolutely stellar and it has not gone unnoticed that, you know, people like Allie have pulled off an amazing pace awards that I thought actually was really cool, um, you know, from my home and not having to get dressed up. So, you know, thank you all for your hard work. TJ, Lisa, Catherine, Andrew, Kamara, Greg, um, you guys are truly spectacular. And if I forgot anyone, I apologize, but your hard work and tenacity in the face of a global pandemic is just mind blowing. So it's this effort that we've really seen across the board and from different industries. I mean, whether you work in an association, a government um, agency, higher ed, you know, leaders in every industry have relied on us. They're looking to us, our, their comms team, the importance of public relations and helping your employer really weather this crisis cannot be emphasized enough. They're looking for guidance. They're looking what to say, how to say it, and, and when. Your professionalism and judgment is really what's helping them to weather this storm. So I have absolutely loved learning from the past leaders of CMPRSA and identifying their passions. And as Greg mentioned, one that's so near and dear to his heart that I'm really excited that, that we're going to continue to make a priority is DE&I for our chapter and not just saying it's a priority, but really formalizing that commitment to ourselves and our members. And Greg has done an absolutely spectacular job by working to better support DE&I efforts. And I, I continue to plan to continue that legacy. So I really wanna to commit to sharing um, any types of learning tools and online resources um, until things get back to normal. And I, I don't think any of us really know what that looks like or when that will be, but I'm honored to be the next 2021 president of CMPRSA and I appreciate all of your support and I welcome your feedback too. So if there are things that you need, tools, um, communications, you know, please feel free to reach out to me and let me know. So we are here for you and thank you for your time. And now I'd like to head over to the PRSSA president presentation. Our student president, Allie was unable to make it tonight. So I'm going to be giving it for her. All right, thanks, Greg. That was right on cue. Can we go to the next slide? So our PRSSA, um, our student chapter here at MSU or Michigan State University for Garland, who's in Alabama and may not know, um, they are just an incredible powerhouse. They have had two welcome meetings in September. Um, they have MSU alumni who are now at Edelman, um, at Franco Public Relations and Marketing, um, also alumni representing at Vanguard. Thank you, TJ. Um, they've also had an internship roundtable with PRSSA eBoard and with Randy Martinez, a career consultant at MSU in Communication Arts and Science. So um, a lot of these students are really working hard to network, to provide value, and to really help seize opportunities despite everything that's going on. Thank you. So a few other initiatives that they're really working on. 
um, Ella has done a great job with her eboard to really think long term and what the long strategy is. Not only trying to um, deploy creative tactics, but also how to make a lasting impact and really truly track or measure that process. So they've created a new membership point system. This has expanded a little bit from previous years. So the goal is to help increase motivation for truly engaging. Um, they have 20 official PRSSA members and they really wanted to create an environment that was casual, um, you know, a safe place where people can truly focus on professional growth, one where they can ask questions and feel comfortable asking those questions and working to grow professionally. Um, they have done quite a bit to connect members to internships, and that has a variety of outcomes from small agencies all the way up to large corporations. Um, another thing that I thought was really fun was they have given folks a piece of East Lansing at home, you know, apparel. So um, another thing that I really wanted to get off the ground when I was the um, PRSSA mentor and no longer am, I just really want to applaud everyone for participating and for making the mentorship program a success. Um, this went from an idea, idea from a president a couple of years ago and now has actually been implemented. And I want to extend a special thank you to all the mentors for lending a hand. Your insight and expertise and time is so valuable for helping students and offering real life applications and what they're doing in their jobs. Um, there have been uh, fundraising with the Greater Lansing Food Bank. So there has been a Chipotle fundraiser and fun news coming up with the social media bingo um, December 16th through the 23rd. So you can follow MSU PRSSA uh, on Instagram and you can donate if you'd like to. Another focus too that I wanna to touch on is that there is no geographic barrier. So um, they've really focused on trying to offer students a variety of perspectives and that includes um, no geographic um, barrier. So they've hosted alums from LA, Chicago, New York, and another incentive to help encourage membership also has been a discounted membership fee, which is at 25% off. So this is a note from Hadley Kerr, the M MSU PRSSA vice president. You can read it, but essentially she talks a little bit about their goals and how they're working really to um, create a presence as a chapter. And they have really put on their creative thinking caps to make it a reality, both virtually and, you know, trying to do some safe, you know, outreach events, um, working and securing and growing relationships with professors and trying to promote organizations in the classroom. So they, they know that even, you know, that extra professor talking about this really helps offer a little bit of credence and also support student involvement. So they, again, they have implemented that point system. So members can receive points for attending various meetings and activities and their members earned a combined total of 520 points this past semester. So they have gone proactively and notified each member of their points total for the fall semester. And part of that is to help educate and inform um, students. So next semester they bring it and uh, earn more points. So their goals have been very thoughtful. So this is a perfect example. When I got into public relations, I didn't know you were supposed to do broader goals with smaller objectives within and the students are implementing this beautifully. So for the APR in my heart, I know that warms others hearts as well. So um, kudos to the students for thinking this through, but some of their goals and um, objectives within those goals. Uh, goal number one is to really increase engagement in the digital environment. This is especially important now with MSU closing and so many students going home unexpectedly mid-semester, they've really had to be nimble and they have worked hard to do that. And part of that is by increasing awareness really in the digital space and trying to help make it again, a conversational simplifying the brand. So it's just a little bit less formal and also um, trying to help grow uh, how many people are involved with a chapter. They're working to increase their social media following and also trying to take advantage of the fact that um, they don't have geographic limitations. So maybe this is an opportunity versus a challenge. They're working to increase their numbers by um, more student outreach events, utilizing that point system that I've mentioned and helping to increase alumni connectivity. I think this is an important point. So many students graduate, go off to their careers and then kind of um, disengage a little bit. They're working hard to grow and strengthen those relations and that bond and that connectivity. 
So um, that they're doing that by distributing to alumni student outreach emails, updating alumni and what they're doing, which I think is an important point. The uh, mentoring program is really important involving that, identifying weekly goals and topics for the mentees and mentors. Um, some of those topics include resume building, mock interview week, a workshop targeted at LinkedIn and what professionals are looking for on people's pages. Um, they've done a really great job continuing to connect with CMPRSA. So this, this presentation is just a great example of how they're working to really kind of grow that um, connection. And they're also thinking beyond just our geography. They're utilizing the Detroit PRSA chapter connections, which I think is really uh, a great tactic and smart as well. So goal number two, um, really helping students to understand the value that PRSSA provides. Um, they wanna help students make the connection between jobs and internships. Um, they're doing that by hosting digital networking events, um, surveying employers on what are they looking for in entry level employees and a student and helping students to really wrap their minds around and communicating those results to their members. Um, providing opportunity for students to practice and build their resume through building the chapters, social and blog channels and get published. Um, if you don't have an internship, that's sometimes a challenge. So this is a really great chance for students to grow their expertise and skill set. Um, developing member skills, hosting skills workshops and creating digital kits for different skill areas. Um, some of these may include stuff that um, may be included in class and maybe even building on that knowledge. For instance, how to write a press release or really having a solid hand on AP style guide, which is something I personally struggle with all the time. Um, another thing, connecting members to resources available through PRSA National and CMPRSA. I think that's such an important point because a lot of people don't realize, wow, there's this massive toolkit available to us. And a lot of people don't even necessarily connect those dots and understand those huge resources are available. Um, exploring different interests of public relations. Some of those tactics include hosting meetings in different areas of public relations, really trying to diversify the speakers that they have at, at meetings and make sure it's a unique um, background and area that students can um, talk to and ask. The mentorship program is another important tactic to help them um, really better understand various career fields and where they may be able to go with their skill set and interests. So continuing on number two, uh, creating a passionate community around public relations. This is really developing informal kind of what I learn sessions led by um, older students and helping really guide and mentor informally the freshmen and sophomore students, the younger students who may need just a little bit of a helping hand. Um, some of these are also um, include social visits or um, you know visiting PR classrooms and trying to help share our chapter and PRSA's chapter and what um, MSU is doing and creating making, meetings focused really on getting to know their members and potential members and promoting social events. Um, they've also done some more case studies and tried to help students really grasp takeaways and what they could learn from those. Um, finally, for, with goal two, providing an opportunity to become a leader. So providing a chance for students to advance, um, helping them really to develop committees so that way students are actually involved and also help to understand juggling various responsibilities and how to help delegate when they need to. Um, finally, emphasize, emphasizing the importance of becoming a leader and how they can help cultivate those leadership skills. So goal number three, build a framework for future chapters. So this is really um, to help increase the chapter's involvement on a national level by securing attendance of three chapter members at the international conference, making sure we have a presence, and also to help increase, increase education about diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, and the national level and the important efforts that are taking place, um, not just here, but all over. Um, creating structure and developing succession planning for each e-board role. This is really important. Um, when I was a PRSSA advisor uh, many moons ago, um, I think people, you know, did a really great job in their roles and then sometimes would graduate and then it just left a gaping knowledge gap in that hole. So um, they've done, the students in charge right now have just done a spectacular job thinking through strategic planning and how can they help set a goal throughout the year and also how they can pre better prepare by thinking through plans and resources, contact lists, which um, seems kind of 
just common sense. But when you're graduating, you're excited, you're thinking about your new job, that may be the last thing that you're necessarily thinking of. So being thoughtful about that in advance can be a huge asset to incoming eBoard members. Um, another thing was to create a record of all responsibilities and the processes for each position. So that way there's kind of a formalized list chain of command and you don't walk into the position guessing at what you're supposed to be doing, but yet have a, a set process and know what to follow. Um, finally, transitioning of knowledge meetings um, to actually sit down and make sure incoming eBoard members understand the process. And if they do have any questions, they can answer them. Finally, establishing a connection to our community. So this is important and a really valuable um, aspect by engaging with profs who teach PR to help um, them really understand the, the materials that they've taught, utilizing community outreach um, during the Bateman case study competition, reaching out to other students and other groups to see if there's possibilities for collaboration and partnering in our community, seeing people who may align with their values, whether that's other organizations or other college PR SSA organizations to potentially do fundraisers or type of collaboration opportunities. So if you have questions you wanna engage, Allie is just a spectacular human being. Um, you can see her quote here, we're always looking to expose our members to new important insights and help prepare them for careers in public relations. Maybe you can help us out. So she's strongly encouraging a broader tent. She wants to engage, she wants to grow membership and you can see MSU PRSSA's various social channels. I encourage you if you're not to follow them on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook account. Um, all the students are working really hard to ensure people stay informed and on the same page. So um, I will leave it at that. Thank you so much. And now I would like to introduce our um, special guest. So Garland Stanfield, the PRSA National Chair. And thank you so much for being here tonight. We're really excited to hear you speak. All right. Thank, thank you, Jessica. And thank you too, Greg. Um, and hello, Central Michigan PRSA. Uh, it's my privilege to be here with you. Um, tonight. So I appreciate it so much. Uh, I do want to uh, do a shout out to my board colleague, uh, Rick Batico, and um, thank Rick for all that he has done in his time on the board and continues to do. Then also to thank Monica Ackerson, who's in your chapter, who has uh, had a really strategic uh, role this year as co-chair of the National Governance Committee. And uh, that group has done so much work and we're really so involved and instrumental in our, um, our leadership assembly that we just had over the weekend. So thank you to both of them. And I will say, you know, not to, to overstate everything, but of course this has been just a crazy, crazy year. And, and I think back to, um, uh, to, to the Wizard of Oz and when, um, when the water's thrown, the Wicked Witch, and she's saying, what a world, what a world. I feel like saying, what a year, what a year, you know, and, and we're all trying not to melt. <laughs> but um, it has been a year, uh, not only the pandemic and not only the social unrest and social injustice and the marching, uh, but what a political year and what a year for wildfires burning on the West Coast and hurricanes, one of the busiest hurricane seasons in the Gulf of Mexico and in the Atlantic uh, coming in. So you, you name it, and, and as you said, murder hornets and, and who knows what else uh, that we've all been dealing with. So um, we kicked off the first of this year with uh, really launching our three-year strategic plan. And I was privileged to lead the development of that plan last year for PRSA for 2020 to 2022. And our, our eight strategic imperatives that we looked at in, in our plan are innovation and change, governance and culture, the convergence of the disciplines, of the, all the communication disciplines, uh, our membership, diversity and inclusion, international potential and advocacy, how we advocate for ourselves in the profession and civility. So all of those came into play this year and in ways we didn't imagine. When I kicked it off, the plan is called Vision 2020, moving PRSA forward, the courage to change. And 
I don't think any of us had the idea how much courage it would it would take through 2020, and the and the ways we would be challenged to change that maybe we hadn't even planned for. Uh, we did see that we expedited many of the um, the goals and objectives in the strategic plan that we thought, okay, this is going to happen in year two. Well, guess what? We had to pivot and move it up into year into year one of the plan. Uh, a lot of that had to do with the technology and, and offering more uh, professional development uh, through technology. And uh, so we, we found ourselves doing that. We also, at the first of the year, looked at, okay, what is our mission uh, and what is our vision? And uh, we, we reiterated those, but we looked at it and said, you know, PRSA never has had any values. We, we don't have any stated values. So we developed values and we had four words that we said we think epitomize what PRSA is about. And one of those is champions, that we champion the profession, we champion our members, we champion those we represent, we champion the students, and we, we are champions. So we found that this year we, we've had to champion a lot of different causes and on behalf of, of individuals. Ethics being one that we are committed to ethics, the ethical practice of communication. So re uh, committing ourselves to our code of ethics and then community. Above all else, we are a community or a community of, of professionals. We're a community of communication professionals, but we also help to facilitate community. Wherever we are, we are facilitating community. And then mastery um, and that we are committed to mastering our profession mastering communications, mastering um, the things that, that are thrown at us to be able to, to move ahead. So I, I really am pleased to say that we've incorporated all those, we've stayed true to our strategic plan, and we have continued to move PRSA forward, even though we're challenged. And so I congratulate you from what I was just hearing about all the fantastic work that you all have done to continue moving PRSA forward where, where you are. Um, so a lot of the things that we did in the year, I'm going to give you just a, a recap of a few things and then talk about a really uh, exciting initiative that was announced just on Saturday. So we did uh, induct 15 new fellows into the College of Fellows. Uh, in October, we held our first ever virtual uh, international conference. So we had a lot of debate about, are we going to have a conference, not have a conference? Are we going to you know, punt to next year. We decided that we would go ahead and do this. It would be uh, a good for our community to be able to come together and um, and learn and celebrate together. So we had the conference. We, we presented many of our things like the Silver Anvil Awards during that conference. We did the induction of the uh, fellows during that conference. We had our social events, we had networking. We had 1600 people who joined us uh, via the platform Six Connect to to um, to celebrate communication, and we did that too in a way that we um, we we looked at uh, issues, really current issues, the pandemic. We looked at mis, dis, and mal information, and what a you know a challenge that is presenting to all of us in our worlds, and what we can do about that and social injustice. So those were all things we talked about and our, our speakers uh, from John Meacham to Nina Jankowitz to uh, Carolyn Johnson to Lada Knott, they really um, you know, just laid it out there and, and were very current with information that we do need to know. Um, our PRSSA, as you were just saying, is a shining star. PRSSA continues to grow around the country. They continue to challenge us as professionals. And um, we were able to add some new PRSA, PRSSA chapters during the year, including our first ever chapter in Puerto Rico. So we were happy to do that early in the year. And we added our 20th HBCU, our Historic Black Colleges and Universities, our 20th um, HBCU at Oakwood University right here in my state of Alabama in uh, Huntsville. So, um, uh, and I'm proud to say that we now have three HBCU PRSSA chapters in the state of Alabama. So um, out of those 20, three of them are, are here in Alabama. Uh, our diversity and inclusion committee has been really hard at work this year. I'm hoping that we see 
more emphasis, not only in diversity and inclusion, but on equity as well. And I've encouraged them to add equity to the name of that committee and have it be um, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, but really fantastic work this year. We They announced uh, their three-year strategic plan, which aligns with uh, the overall strategic plan. They did that in May and uh, started rolling out uh, that plan. And right when that was rolling out was when all of the um, social unrest began and social injustice and everything with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and others. Um, so that really made us expedite some of that plan and some of what we are doing as, as a, a national board. And uh, part of that was launching a, a webinar series called Diverse Dialogues, where we had people from um, diverse backgrounds to be able to share their experiences and, and to provide a way for people to interact and to, to say, here's, here's what my experience is. And, and probably more than anything, what was important of that is the learning that could come from that, to be able to have that dialogue and learn. And one of the things that I had many calls in June and July from members across the country who were saying, you know, PRSA has talked and talked and talked for years and it's, there's, um, there's no more time for talk, we need to go to action. And so that's what we're trying to do is move from talk to action, whether that is uh, talking about racial injustice, whether that's talking about, talking about the LGBTQ community, whether that's talking about um, international um, public relations or, uh, or whatever the diverse background is and those with uh, differing abilities, those with disabilities that have differing abilities than us and, and how do we communicate around that and address that and engage those and be a welcoming community as PRSA, regardless of what you are, what your background is, that you are welcome to be part of us and you feel welcomed. Um, so we made a lot of, um, of headway on that and uh, we started out, we provided diversity training for our staff at the national office. We provided that for the board of directors. And then at our leadership rally in late September, we provided for all the incoming leaders, uh, diversity training and unconscious bias training. So that's something we're committed to continuing to do so that we can continue the conversation, but move the conversation to action as well. So there are many other things that we have done. There are, are several things that we undertook as a um, board to try to remove barriers to leadership for persons of color and other diverse backgrounds as well. And I, I'm pleased to say that uh, many of those things uh, have come to pass and they did, they did pass at our delegate assembly. And uh, we intentionally set out to also have a more diverse board at the national level. So I'm, I'm pleased to say that our 2022 incoming uh, chair for 2022 is Felicia Blow, who um, is, is a, a black uh, member who is at an HBCU. Uh, we also have uh, Joseph Abreu, who's coming on as secretary, who is from uh, South Florida, who, who is from a, a diverse background from his nationality, but he's also from the LGBTQ community. So on our, um, our EC, we've got more diversity coming in next year. On the board at, at large, we have more diversity coming in with representation from not only uh, the, the gender and race and uh, sexual orientation, but from all kinds of different disciplines and uh, across uh, public relations. So we're, we're really pleased to be able to say that we're, we're, we're moving in the right direction to be more diverse. Um, I will tell you that we, we relaunched our CEO search back this year. We, we had a search last year after our former CEO left and uh, we were not successful in reaching an agreement with any candidate last year. So we put it on hold through the holidays and first of the year, we had really planned to kick it off in the spring and then um, the uh, pandemic kicked us. And <laughs> so it was really July before we were able to pick things back up. But we've narrowed that down now to two candidates and are having interviews. And our hope is that within the next couple of weeks, we'll be announcing uh, PRSA's next CEO. So stay tuned for that. Our membership for a number of years has been pretty flat. We've gone from 21 to 22,000 members. 
uh, during this pandemic, it has dropped below 20,000. Our retention rate is remaining around 74, 75%, which is where it usually is, but where we have suffered is we haven't been adding any new members this year. We, we typically do have somewhere around 25% uh, of our members who don't renew for one reason or another, but we usually pick those up in new members. We just have not been picking up new members this year. And that may be something that you've been seeing in your own chapter. Um, but at the same time, we've seen some growth. Uh, our group memberships are growing. And then we are looking at new ways to engage members. And one of the things that I challenged um, our membership committee and staff with this year was we've basically for 73, 74 years had the same kind of membership model. And I said, we need some new membership models. Let's look at some, you know, the world's not the same as it was 70 something years ago. And people now are looking for new ways to engage in new memberships. So um, at uh, the assembly this past weekend, we did introduce some possible membership models based on research that's been done this year. Uh, and we gave the uh, delegates an opportunity to weigh in and say, hey, I think this will work. I think that will work. I'm really more interested in this and not that one to give us some uh, ways to move forward. So some of those that we did, uh, and I'll, I'll share those briefly, is uh, a, a membership where a section is included. So you get the membership and it includes a section um, that may resonate with you. A full access membership, and that would be a membership that includes everything. It's all inclusive. So if you're used to paying extra for webinars and paying extra for uh, all these other programs that might be add-ons, there would not be add-ons and you would say, okay, I'm willing to pay a little bit more, but just have full access to anything I want during the year. The other one is an a la carte membership where you kind of build what you want and say, okay, I want this and I want this. I want my, uh, you know, I want my um, CMPRSA membership. And from national, I want these four or five things. Um, and then an organizational membership is another one where instead of it being a, a, a um, membership you would have, your organization would own the membership. It's, it's much like uh, the way we do our group memberships now. So if you do group memberships, the organization owns that. I work at a children's hospital, which has been really interesting during the pandemic year as well. But uh, we have, I've got 10 on my staff that we have a, a group membership. The hospital owns the membership. So those, those organizational memberships would be much the same way. And then if someone leaves, they don't take the membership with them, but whoever's recruited in comes into that slot. Um, and then we've talked about associate memberships, which would be vendors and suppliers that work with PRSA. And they would, uh, we would offer them kind of an associate membership and it would be a new member uh, category that we've never had before. And then another thing that we've talked about that really was popular is waiving the initiation fee and reinstatement fee. We have a lot of people who, who go on, they go all the way up to the point of they're about to hit the button to join PRSA, but there is an initiation fee of $65 and they're thinking, okay, well, I don't know what. And so then they abandon it and they don't join. Um, and that was really a fee that was put into place when things were not as automated and not online and there was processing. Well, now we don't have all that. And so we're saying, okay, well, let's maybe just get rid of that fee. And then if someone drops their membership, we have a reinstatement fee. Well, that was kind of the same thing. So we're talking about just, just waive the initiation fee, waive those reinstatement fees, and maybe that will cause more people to, to follow through with re either reinstating their membership or getting that first membership. So um, that's kind of a, a, a fast year in review. Um, I don't think my dog liked it, but um, she's barking. The, um, the uh, advocacy committee with Nance Larson has been the um, head of that committee this year. When Nance and I looked at the first of the year, I said, you know, I want us as an advocacy to be able to be more proactive instead of reactive. And I want us to give um, some tools for our members to be able to engage with, to advocate in their own communities. And I want us to look at um, tying to our strategic plan and looking at civility, looking at mis dis mal information, looking at um, uh, DE&I. And then we didn't really understand at the time how much we would need to be leaning into social injustice and what was going on. So they really took that to heart and developed a program. 
that can be a, an evergreen program. And I, I am, um, I'm gonna try to share my screen with you. Um, and announced just this past weekend, a program called Voices for Everyone. And this is, it's meant to be evergreen. It, it's meant to uh, be able to, for our members to take it, to build mutual understanding, to go into their own communities for engagement, uh, to, to help uh, promote civil discourse. And um, so we're really, really pleased to be able to be launching this in January. There will be a website, there'll be a repository, there will be a place where you can share information, where you can go and find information. So um, here's the team that has put that together, Voices for Everyone, as I said, Nance Larson, who has been the advocacy chair, Felicia Blow, uh, and Mark Dvorak, who are working kind of more in that DE&I space. And to, uh, it's built on uh, four pillars, and those pillars include uh, the DE&I, it includes civility, uh, it includes mis, dis, and malinformation, and then uh, uh, civic engagement. So um, uh, Mike Charenson is heading up the uh, mis, dis, and malinformation. John Goldberg and Gary Saffitz, along with Tony Dongelo, are looking at civility. And then John Palusek is uh, looking at that civic engagement piece. So those are kind of the leaders of this. And they're looking at this as a, as a license to lead. It's kind of tied into our code of ethics, saying that as, as communicators, we serve the public interest. Uh, we defend evidence in evidence-based practice. We promote honest, transparent communication that helps people make better decisions. Um, and then we support the right to free speech, to diversity of thought, and open, inclusive civil discourse. So that's kind of that. Um, you know, as communicators, as public relations professionals, we are seeking to change attitudes, opinions, and beliefs. So we're, we're really concerned with that. And we're looking at how do we change behavior? How do we position PRSA and the professionals who are our members and the greater communication community to be leaders in the national conversation so that we can help foster fact-based dialogue, informed decision, civil um, com communication or civil um, conversations, empower thought leadership, and be able to harness our collective expertise as communicators and, and share our insight and our influence, not only nationally, but, but right in your own community, and that we help build trust and understanding. So um, it's looking to inspire change through action. It is a strategic program, as I said, tied to our strategic plan. So um, part of this is combating misinformation, disinformation, malinformation, and how we can do that in a way that um, helps people make better informed decisions. We're modeling effective discourse. This is the part that has to do with um, civil civility, embracing diversity, equity, and inclusion, and then driving civic engagement. And so we've We've been seeing an increase in people connecting with civil engagement in the last couple of years, and especially the uh, the millennials and Gen Z are are very civically engaged, and they want to make a difference. They want to engage uh, with things that are going on in their community. So, how do we how do we do that as communicators? How do we engage that as communicators? How do we lead our companies, our organizations? in helping their employees to appropriately engage in, in, in uh, their communities. So um, it's really changed through action. It, it is a platform for discussion, a marketplace of ideas, a positive space for expertise and experience, as I said, to be shared. Uh, professional development and training programs. So there will be PD involved in this, curated data that will be on the website, shareable assets from individuals, companies, chapters, kind of that best practice model, and then resources that you can engage with. I don't have to tell you that mis, dis, and malinformation is so prevalent in, in everything. 
Uh, and so it's hard to tell sometimes what is what is true, what is not true, what is you know what is out there that's being more black PR that, that's setting uh, you know that is a, a malinformation that's been planted to make you think something when it's not really true. So um, you can see of all the social media mentions uh, how many are are maybe not true, and that it takes true stories six times as long for uh, than it does false stories to go around the internet. And part of that is because people want to share things that are not true so that they can try to get their message out there. Um, and you see that false news stories are 70% more likely to be retweeted than true stories, and that's from MIT. So that's part of what we're up against. And the civility and civil dialogue, 94% uh, in 2010 said they thought incivility was a problem. That has not changed much in the last 10 years. Uh, in the last year, 72% say they think incivility is getting worse. And I, I do think where we are as a world and as a society and, and how we become more polarized uh, keeps to um, increasing incivility and people not being able to have a productive conversation. So um, we're also looking at diversity, equity, and inclusion and how we can have courageous thought leadership in that arena, engaging members in what we're calling self-discovery so that we're asking the questions, we're having the conversations, uh, and we're moving then to action, as I said before, and in a way that we can amplify our own PRSA uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. Um, and we, we had a, a survey last year where we talked to our members to say, you know, how important is it to you that PRSA represents the full diversity of our profession? And so you can see that 63% said it was extremely important, and then another 23% somewhat important. Um, so most of our members are saying this is something important that we feel like PRSA needs to address. And then in civic engagement, really the idea of the power of one that you can make a difference, that you engaging in your community civically can make a difference, that, that through uh, civil discourse, through making sure that you are well-educated and then engaging in your community, you can make a difference and that's important to democracy in our country. So some of the things we've done so far, the as I said, the ICON 2020 uh, dealt with these issues, all of these issues, it was focused on it, our DNI strategic plan is focused on it. Um, the civility co-chairs have already written a white paper that's available on uh, prsa.org. Um, in 2021, we've been pleased to announce that the PRSSA Bateman competition will be around civility. So the students will have an opportunity to look at civility and, and to delve deeply into it and, and to come back with, with their uh, ideas. Uh, we have partnered in strategic partnerships with Cambridge on mis dis malinformation inoculation. There's a there's a game out there now that you can play this video game that helps to uh, increase your knowledge of, of how you can um, recognize misinformation and better equip yourself to to uh, recognize that. And then other partnerships, as uh, like with the Porner Institute and with other. Uh, communication organizations that are also looking at um, trying to uh, educate around mis, dis, and mal information. So what we need you to do is become inspired. We need you to contribute your expertise because there's so many things that all of our chapters are already doing in this space that we need to know about and share. Uh, we need to provide your feedback on how you think it can be made better and then share how you are engaged as a chapter, whatever your community is. And there is a, uh, you can go to uh, v for e Voices for Everyone, v for e at prsa.org. You can send messages there. Um, and we will be launching a Voices for Everyone website right after the first of the year that will be this repository for all of this information. And um, so we, we want you to, to do, you know, to explore, engage, share, contribute, and lead in these ways. So it's really all of us. It's not just the national board. It's not just uh, the DE&I committee nationally. It's not just uh, those who are involved in these uh, pillars for Voices for Everyone. But if we're gonna make this work, it has to be all of us working together uh, throughout all our PRSA communities. So anyway, that's, um, 
the end of um, of my presentation, and I am happy to answer questions along with the rest of you. Thank you so much, Carla. And before I open it up, I'm just going to change it so everyone can see the three of us. Um, and thank you for your remarks and reporting out on that. I know it was my first year sitting in as a delegate on Saturday. So at the tail end when that was announced, that was a, a very exciting uh, resource to look forward to as a member. Um, and thank you to Jess for your remarks and update on behalf of PRSSA. Before we officially move into question and answer, if you want to throw those in the chat or the q and I do have a couple. Um, if not, I just want to say um, your input as members here with us is so important. And so you can expect the next member survey um, with hard work from Kirsten Waldron, our membership chair, to launch via email tomorrow morning. And it will be open until December 20th. And really all of those things there are such helpful data for us as a chapter, but be able to provide to our district and national on what you need as resources. I think in 2020, given COVID and all of the other uncertainty that we've had to face amongst challenges, um, we really wanna know how we can best serve you. So keep an eye out for that. To hit your mailboxes tomorrow and to be open until December 20th, we might even incentivize you um, to fill it out. So keep an eye for that. Um, and that is also, there is a track for members and non-members. So if you're tuning in or watching this as a non-member, we wanna understand if you've ever been one, why aren't you one anymore? If you're not, how can we get you to be a member of our chapter at NPRSA National? So with that, um, I will gladly open it up to questions either for CMPRSA, PRSSA, or Garland here tonight. One that I have as folks are maybe mulling it over, and if we end early, I think that's just in fine. Garland, how do you see, uh, I know we've kind of talked about a new normal, and so how do you see, or how have you already seen our profession evolving as a result of all of these challenges faced in 2020 um, in a broad sense? And, and thank you for that question. I do think, you know, you, you said something about this early on in your comments, and that almost all industries now are relying more on their communications professionals and because the messaging, whether that has to be internally to employees or externally to whatever constituents, they are looking more and more for their communications professionals to be advisors to them. So if you're thinking about all the, all the hats we wear, one of those has been trusted advisor in the past and we've wanted to have that valued more and we've wanted to be able to have that kind of virtual seat at the table or the real seat at the table when it comes to addressing these issues and so I, I do think that the virus has really opened that door more where we've been accounted on more and and we have performed and, and we have stepped up and so I, I think going forward we will see that um, our organizations are relying on us more and that we have helped to solidify our position in our organizations even more. So I, I do think that that will be will be one. You know, going forward as well, as you said, it's it's kind of a new normal. We don't know what that's gonna be. And we will, I don't think we'll ever go back to like we are. And I think PRSA as an organization will not go back to the way we were before. I think that uh, you know even next year we may we may find ourselves the um, the international conference is set in October around the I think the 17th or so uh, 15th to 17th or 17th to 19th I can't remember the exact dates but um, it's for Orlando but we won't just be an in person event there it's probably going to be an event where you can choose to be in person or you can still choose to to take part in it virtually. And in some shape or form. So um, I think our our conference will never be the same. I think our our prof professional development offerings will never be the same. And um, you know, as we go through and we think about this whole year as a as a campaign, if we if we thought about 2020 as a campaign in our experience, um, you know, you've got what you have to do and you've got the implementation. But we we're, we're going to soon be in that evaluation phase. And shame on us if we don't learn from what we evaluate. 
and be able to take that into the future and and be better professionals for that be a better organization for that so i i think we'll we'll never be the same but we will learn from 2020 and we'll be better for it i totally agree well and it's over the past several years communications pr and marketing has continued to blur and now our home and work lives are continuing to blur so it's just a lot of integration and i think we have to get through a chunk of it to realize what to learn from. And like you said, um, I think it would be silly of us if we didn't make some changes as a result of everything that was hurled at us this year. Um, I do see something that was just dropped in the Q&A from someone in the room. How is National planning to utilize their work through the Voices for Everyone initiative to ensure members feel valued and have a seat at the table? Well, and that's going to be an important part of it because it really is not a um, it's not a national initiative. And as I was just saying, it's going to take all of us. And so there are going to be resources there. The website will be there. There will be uh, resources for each of those four pillars for people to be able to take and actionize and and uh, operationalize in your own community, whether that's a chapter, district, or section. Um, but then we're also going to have to rely on you all as volunteers and you as members to share those best practices and say, this is what our chapter has done. This is what our section has done. Here is the way we've addressed social unrest and social injustice. This is the way we have made sure that we are building diversity, equity, and inclusion. Here are things that we have done that um, address mis, dis, and mal information. Here are the ways that we are equipping our members to to uh, promote civil discourse in our communities. And so um, it, it's really going to be, um, it, to, to look at, um, at, at a campaign or look at the way that we address communications, it's that, that two-way feedback loop. So it's kind of that, that same two-way feedback where, uh, yes, there will be some things put out there from national, but yes, it's going to be just as important that we hear from you and that there is um, uh, that information sharing and the success sharing so that we all can benefit from that. We're also going to be looking at the partnerships that we have with like the Pointer Institute in Cambridge and other uh, uh, organizations across the globe, not just in this country, and how they're addressing those and share those with all of you as well. Um, so um, we, we are looking for that feedback and we're hoping that we hear from you so that um, you have that virtual seat at the table to say, this is how this is working or to ask questions. How, how can we address this particular issue? Um, so if you've ever been in the, um, in, in the PR essay open forum and people address, put questions in there and say, hey, I'm dealing with this issue. Is anybody, we, you know, we're looking for voices for everyone to be kind of the same way in that you can say, I'm, I'm dealing with this. Anybody, you know, had success in this area? Um, because I can tell you that um, PR essay national does not have all the answers. And uh, many times the answers are out there with all of you. And so, um, so we we need we need each other, um, and, and that's a good um, analogy to where we are in this country, in that uh, in dealing with all these issues, mis dis mal information, dealing with social injustice, dealing with incivility, dealing with civic engagement, we all need each other. Uh, as as a society, we need each other. And uh, part of the reason we're where we are with incivility is because we don't realize how much we need each other. I completely agree. And I think as it relates to for everyone, some resources I think that I'm just thinking from the top of my head that might be uh, helpful for chapters is internal um, resources. So how do homogenous groups welcome diverse voices onto their leadership? And how do you have those uncomfortable or difficult conversations? And I think right. even organizations, as you have staff or HR and you are communications folks, like we have that power to bring those conversations there. So um, I think that this obviously will be an organic and living, breathing campaign from PRSA. And I'm, I'm hopeful that it continues to get that feedback and grow over time. So it's very exciting. 
Awesome. Well, I'm not seeing anything in the chat or the Q&A, so I know we are, are a handful of minutes over, so I do want to be respectful of all of our time. So I will thank everyone here again, Garland, Jess, Jennifer Day, and Rick Batico for joining us in the virtual audience. It has been a year, that is for sure, and so we're so thankful for everyone that joined us to toast to the end of 2020 and to brighter things into 2021, but to keep those silver linings and lessons with us into the next year. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Garland and Jess, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Pleasure to be with you all. Stay safe. Wash your Thanks, hands, Kyle. social distance, wear a mask. Thanks, <laughs> Bye. everyone.